Hill back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20-10. Touchdown. This is going to be in the game. Yes. Oh, yes. Scores. Yes. 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 Pete Anderson alongside Joe Ruin here on QC TV Sports. And we're live here from the XM Energy Center, just moments away from the semifinal of the class AA State Hockey Tournament Championship. Joe, this is going to be a epic matchup. Huskies looking for their repeat trip to the championship. Skippers looking to get back there for the first time since 2018. And this has been a season this year for Andover to avenge some earlier losses. They uh, took a two to a four to one loss earlier to uh, Minnetonka, the second game of the season. And they certainly want to avenge that and get the win tonight. Minnetonka, meanwhile, coming in with an 18 game win streak. But uh, they had a scare last night. It didn't come easy for them as they took on Hill Murray. A Hill Murray, a team at about 500. They really struggled to get the win in overtime. Hill Murray gave them everything they could. They had a lead uh, late into that game, and then it was Minnetonka tying it up late, getting to overtime, and earning their trip here into the state double-A semifinal. Andover Huskies, meanwhile, had a much easier road of a game, if you call it easy, but uh, with a 5-2 victory. Uh, Gavin Thorson, leading scorer on the Huskies with the hat trick, really leading the way. That is, and as we take a look a little bit more at the tail, of the tape uh, we can see kind of the difference as these two teams compare uh, face to face and on a side to side component but uh, it is the Thorson just a spark just that speed but it puts everyone on defense meanwhile Conway uh, was held scoreless in terms of goals for his first time in quite a while and then of course uh, Caden Casey just plays that complete sheet of ice in and out consistent throughout the, but in goal Major kudos goes to Altman because Altman made that beautiful glove save and several others to keep it just to a one nothing deficit early in that second period. Altman kept the Huskies in it, uh, he, as you mentioned, in that second period, especially early in the second period. Lakeville South really buzzing, looking to uh, come out and, and retake the lead after taking a one nothing lead. Huskies answered in the first, and Altman was up to the task. And as you mentioned, uh, Cooper Conway off the score sheet. He did have a goal that was disallowed because of a, a uh, an offside, and uh, that, that was the ultimately the determining factor that kept him off of the score sheet yesterday. But we talk about top lines. Andover, top line, has a hundred over 100 goals combined between their three players. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Minnetonka top line, no slouch themselves. Not at all. They can produce about 60 goals combined. But across the way, they just play so well. There you get a look, 105 goals for the top lines versus 65. Uh, the goal differential, scoring differential, a plus 109 for Andover. Meanwhile, 95 coming away here for the Skipper. Skippers, not necessarily a highest scoring team, but they're tough defensively and very conservative. Meanwhile, you look at goals per game, and that's why they're averaging just surrendering one goal a game for the Skippers. And meanwhile, Andover uh, coming up on six a game. And a power play percentage, this is the, the component with it, where I think Andover can really make a difference here. Because they love the penalty kills and they love the power plays and they can generate goals either way, Pete. Minnetonka has been ranked really in the top three all season long. They came out as a you know preseason one or two, depending on which uh, which poll you you appeared to uh, or you favored. But the Minnetonka, as you mentioned, has had a couple of close calls. Their section final was a very tight game that went to overtime. Their section or the uh, quarterfinal game, as you mentioned, that was a very close game that went to overtime. Do you think that, that that tightness carries over here tonight into a team that's that's really uh, clicking on all cylinders? Yeah, I think it does. I think people fear that speed. They know that they can cut. Last night in the press conference, you had a chance to, to talk about it, and they defensively, you could hear, uh, you know, the defensive strategy for Lakeville South was we cannot allow those stretch passes out. We have got to minimize it. But we know this is a top caliber line, and, and they the speed concerns everyone, including the goalie, because, Pete, we saw that at Duluth East. That goalie was, it was like a flyby on top gun as they went by the tower. He was shaken in that first period. And, uh, of course, you just knew it was a matter of time before they exploded for that goal. Second period was the same last night. Not quite as many goals. But that speed, I think, really puts Minnetonka on their heels. Even though they're a very strong defensive team, 
No one sees the speed like this, and Andover played them second game of the season. The team has progressed so much, and uh, I just think it's, it's, it, this could be a good night for Andover. I also we, think they need to put shots on goal with, with the goalie for Minnetonka. He looked rattled last night, Pete. Andover has the speed. Andover is uh, has got the goal scoring ability. On the flip side, it's Minnetonka. They've got the size. They've got the physicality, and they have the defense on that back end. We haven't talked about them yet, but they're they're a big part of this matchup. Is that uh, that top line, that top blue line for the Minnetonka Skippers in Liam Hupka and John Stout. John Stout uh, coming up with a big goal last night, and uh, he he is a, a a presence back there on the blue line, both in the offensive and the defensive side. He is. He's a junior. Juniors already committed to the, to the Bulldogs, Minnesota Duluth. Again, he got the game-winning goal last night in overtime, also added an assist, Hupka as well. Just a strong over in performance. Four goals, 19 assists, uh, but it's on that power play where they like to do some magic. Seven assists for Hupka on that piece. Uh, when it comes to that power play piece as well, there's a you know a couple of players you need to keep your eye on here for Minnetonka, and one is Javon Moore, number 22. He leads the team with seven power play goals, actually tied in that category. Uh, but uh, they've got the guys who can put some punch to it, and I really think the goal tonight for the Huskies, put pucks on and keep buzzing by that goaltender. It, it, there's nothing like that top gun speed this top line provides. As you mentioned, there were there were moments yesterday in that Hill Murray game where Kaiser Nelson, the very effective goaltender for Minnetonka this year, 22 and two on the season, seven shutouts, and one, two, three goal for, goals against average. Quickly off the faceoff, a shot by Hagen Burrow, Burrows goes wide of the net, and Altman, and we're underway. Cooper Conway moves into the offensive zone, gives off for Thorson, he loses the puck, and skippers are coming the other way. Burrows gives off to Moore. Moore dumps it in deep. Altman settles and it gets played around the boards near side. Here is Thorson playing across the middle to Landon Stringfellow. Stringfellow pushes past neutral ice. A little give and go game there with Cooper Conway on the left side boards and Conway gets decked into the backside boards. Puck still free into the corner. Conway will go there and push. Burrows comes away with it for the skippers. Thorson steps in to help out and the puck wraps around near side. Pardo pinches in. Tries to push it in deep and it doesn't get there. Now held in at the point by Caden Casey. Casey pushes it in and the rest of the Huskies are going to go get a change and get some fresh skaters for Andover. Minnetonka breaks out of their zone. Here is Moore. Moore will dump it in again. Goes towards Altman but misses the net. Drew Law pushes forward. Ben Dahl can't touch up but there's Brooks Cogswell to push it in. Long stretch pass, trying to get it for Luke Geary. Touched it momentarily, but it's taken away. And here comes Brooks Cogswell inside the Minnetonka zone. He shoots, and that's on Kaiser Nelson, and he gloves it. Well, both teams have had a couple of rotations with lines to kind of get that uh, rolling and that uh, feel of, uh, again, each game is so different as you begin, but uh, you're playing in the largest high school venue. In fact, we just saw a statistic Taylor was showing us. The attendance for last night's uh, quarterfinal matchup here at the Excel Center was, was it the second and the fourth largest hockey crowd in attendance here across the country here at the Excel Center. Dahl wins the faceoff. Cogswell grabs it and turn, quickly turns and fires towards the net. Misses everything. Now it comes out of the zone, and Tristan May Robinson will quickly send it right back in. Playing it behind the red line is Holzer for Minnetonka. Played up and out of the zone. And now controlling is Jack Sand. Sand works to the middle, gets to the right circle, shoots, and it deflects out just wide of the net. Nobody there in front for the skippers to tap that one in. Played in behind the net. Now back out to the near side wall, racing to it on the near side for Minnetonka. That was Danny Pasqua. Pasqua can't control, and now it's Stringfellow taking it himself. Gets into the zone, and then it's taken away by Minnetonka. Puck free on the near side boards. Luke Babineau in there for the Huskies. And finally coming away with the puck on the Minnetonka end and pushing out into neutral ice. Working towards the middle, near side, shot taken, tipped in on Altman. He turns it away with the leg pads, goes into the corner. That was Hagen Burrows with the tip right in front. And now Thorson has it near side in the near circle. Backhands goes off the side of the cage on the backside. And puck comes free on the outside. Moore. Aforementioned, 
Big power play scorer shoots, and that one's gloved by Bo Altman. Sees it all the way from the left side boards. Moore's got such a quick shot. He snaps that off. You saw it right there. A quick wrister just by and uses that uh, defense as a hit. There's uh, another good scoring opportunity, but Moore comes in with 10 goals, 23 assists. Gary, 18 goals, 22 assists. And Burroughs, 22 goals, 20 assists. Face off to Altman's right. Face off win goes to Minnetonka. Sent through the middle, and it comes all the way out of the zone. It's going to come all the way back into the skipper zone. Nelson plays it, settles it for Stout. He overskates it as he was being pressured. Puck high in the air. Going to get that was Austin Westman. Had a little bit of a heighted disadvantage against some of those Minnetonka skaters. Played behind here, Stout in his own end. Looking, looking, gets stopped again. There's Austin Westman playing the pass. Dangerous pass through the middle as Westman nearly got there. Now here comes Javon Moore, long pass outside the reach. And this is not icing. He didn't think he got to that red line, but will play on. Cycling through, and Stringfellow is going to come away with the puck in the far side corner. He drops for Pardo. Pardo now has time and space. He'll look ahead. Finds it for Westman, who can't control, and it comes right back here. Stringfellow tips it ahead. And he's just trying to get out of his own side of the ice. Now it's all the way back in his own end. Right at center ice. Shot taken and sent in on Altman. Slows it down. Pardo gets checked off the puck. Cogswell now has it in circles. Gives off for Dahl. Dahl has space on the right side. He works in. Toe drag. Shoots. And it goes wide of the net on the glove side for Nelson. Ben Dahl checked off the puck inside the Minnetonka zone. And here they come the other way. Three on two for the skippers. Wide side, now here, near side shot. Luke Gary tried to go back on the other side to Ashton Schultz, and he missed the pass. Nice defensive play and disrupted the stick of the shooter that time. Dahl in down low for the Huskies. He gets checked off the puck. Puck comes free, and the skippers will be the first one to there get there. It's Luke Gary, but he doesn't clear the zone. Gets sent back in. Huskies are going to get a change. And looking to bring the puck up now is Ryan Holzer. Ryan Holzer works and now pitchforks it. In deep, in behind the Huskies goal and wraps around. Shot from the circle, goes high over the goal and off the glass. All the way out to the near side point. And still looking for really any possession for the skippers inside the Husky zone. Finally a takeaway and now trying to feed up for Caden Casey, gets inside the Minnetonka zone. Conway deals a check on the back end. A little back and forth. Not much doing as far as possession through the middle. Everything's keeping to the outside for both teams. Shot taken. That one's easily sticked away there by Bo Altman. That shot by Danny Clares. Centering opportunity. Comes out to the point. Here's Clares. He winds. He fires. He looks for the tip, and it just goes wide of the net on the near side. That was a good idea. They're looking for Javon Moore. Moore pushed it just wide. Another Opportunity here's clears the top. He gets it over to Stout. Stout shoots. That's blocked, and it's going to come out of the zone. And Conway thought about going outside. Instead, he works back to the middle, tried to feed Thorson, and his pass is picked off. They're coming right back the other way. Here is Burroughs losing the puck inside the Husky zone. Thought Andover had a good chance there coming down that uh, side of the ice, but uh, good defensive play there again by uh, Stout. Conway gains the zone for the Huskies, centers it to the middle, and it bounces past Thorson's stick. Thorson gets sent to the ice. Big, big penalty, or a big hit. And a penalty going to be taken here. Huskies will be put on the power play. Thorson's still down. Taking that penalty. Yep, that's going to be a big one. That's because Hulka. Yeah. This you, might be a five. Yeah, he took a hard pop, and then on top of it, he gave him a little shove afterwards. And uh, you're going to give him a roughing. Just a rough is the call. But you could see as they take a TV timeout, for those of you at home, 8.40 or 10.50 to go here in this first period on the TV timeout. Meanwhile, the Huskies will get their first chance on the power play. But uh, when Hupka was not in there, and they had uh, number three defensively back players trying to team up back there along with Stout, the Huskies were getting some room going and making some penetration. Now they're going to chance with him on the on the bench on the penalty kill for the Skippers. This this could be a critical 
component because those two back there, Hopka and Stout, they'll play the majority of the game back there, those two, and this is a big gap to fill. And the Huskies, well, since uh, just after that Champlain Park game this year, I know Jim Childs had a great stat on it. I think their power plays close to 58% uh, uh, since midway through the season, and they've been lighting it up. And uh, they're, they're, they're feeling it well on that power play, and now's a good time for them to jump out. Yeah, you and I had a, uh, a good chat uh, with the head coach Mark Manny up in Duluth at the section final, and we talked about the power play and, uh, you know, how much of a different uh, feel it has, a different vibe it has, A, with the healthy Caden Casey, and B, you know, they, they've kind of figured some things out on the back end as well. And, uh, you know, really since the, the, the turn of the, the year, the new year, is, has been the, the transition. That holiday tournament is really when they started picking things up. And, uh, you know, they, they went from being three for 34 to now on the season 39 for 103. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a turnaround that's significant and uh, has been very, very crucial to the, the run that the Huskies have been on. They put Casey at that point of the umbrella formation on the power play. He's got 19 power play assists this season. Thorson against Schultz in the faceoff circle. Gets pulled back, but Schultz is going to take the puck away and send it out. Casey races back into his own end to get it. He's pressured by Sam Sheets, and now he gives way, and Casey will work up through his own end. Center ice gives off here near side for Thorson. Thorson centers through the middle for Conway. Conway lost the puck, tried to get it back on the backhand, and Minnetonka is able to recover and send it down. Altman slows that puck behind his own net. Casey slowly plays down and now surveys. Works through the middle. Gives near side here right at center ice to Thorson. Thorson gains the zone, tries the same play, and this time it's picked off and sent right back down. 40 seconds already gone by here in the power play for the Huskies and the roughing penalty to Liam Hupka. Thorson tried that backhand pass again, that time against Stout, who's going to Minnesota Duluth. He picked it up and sent it length of the ice. Casey dumps it in. Conway will chase on the near side. He pushes through in the corner and loses the puck. Gets wrapped around. Thorson able to pinch it off right there at the half wall. Gives back to Casey on the point. Now back to Thorson. Little give and go. He's pressured, and he sends it down low for Conway. Conway turns and fires, centers it to nobody, and it's picked up and sent the length of the ice by Gavin Geary. Altman will settle it again. The Huskies will get a change. Now we're under 40 seconds left in the power play. Long pass ahead. Trying to find Mac Yell. Now the puck comes off the boards for Babineau. Babineau can't control far side. And Minnetonka looks like they're going to be able to kill this one as they get it out of the zone and all the way down into the Husky zone. Pardo racing against uh, Moore. And now a pickoff here sent in. Moore has it on the left circle. He's just going to turn and wait and sends it back to neutralize to Stout. who will let this penalty expire. He winds and fires all the way down the length of the ice. That's going to come off and takes a Odd bounce, Altman wisely went in and found his post, otherwise that could have carried him right off of his body in. Conway gains the zone, tries a quick shot, that one gets through traffic, and Nelson able to beat Conway to the puck and drop the glove on it and gets a whistle with 8.38 remaining here in this first period. Well, the Huskies had a chance right out of the gate, their first rush and entry in on that power play as Thorson put it right on the dime for Conway, but then it went between his skates, had trouble finding it, but he had a good look at a goal there if he could have just located that puck. Full strength for the skippers. They win the faceoff, and now will break out of their zone. Sent in deep. Altman comes out of the net, plays it off the backboards, and then sends it around the boards for Conway, who taps it right into the middle of the ice. Nobody there for Minnetonka. Casey settles it, now gets a stretch pass ahead for Conway, and he and Hupka come together. Exchanged pleasantries, but Hupka has the puck now in his own end. Passes it ahead. Here's Aston Schultz. Schultz working past Drew Law. Drew, he goes all the way around the net. Up to the top, there's Hupka, and he sends it right back down for Luke Geary. Casey chips it away. Comes around the half wall and centering pass. Can't find its way into Sam Sheets. The other way for the Huskies. Casey has it in now behind his own net. Looking. Saucer pass ahead for Thorson. Can't complete that one. Icing waved off. Thorson will get there first. Tries to center it. Goes off the back of the cage. He loses the puck, and Minnetonka has it now. 
Chipped in off the boards, all the way out. Icing already waved off. Pardo will get it behind his own net. Plays it to Landon Stringfellow. Stringfellow gets pinched off the puck. And he and Dahl will work together to get this one out and ahead for Luke Babino. Babino pressured, but he's able to get it out and get it ahead to Brooks Cogswell. Cogswell took one sideways step, and that met Ben Dahl have to go in early, and it's an offside against the Huskies. Yep, that was Dahl with the goal last night. He, he was trailing on the play on a rush up ice and some pressure put on by Thorson. He was there for the rebound and cashed it in. Meanwhile, I thought Streamfella had a heck of a game last night for Andover defensively and set up a goal late in that game. Very solid play there by Landon Stringfellow, junior defenseman. He was here last year, had the experience of getting a lot of minutes, obviously in a uh, multiple overtime situation. Everybody plays a lot of minutes. Inside their own zone, Minnetonka looking to break out. Plays it ahead here is Alex Lunsky. Lunsky loses the puck, and the Huskies start the other way. Bendall right at center ice, now works it ahead, gets it to Babineau. Babineau gets checked off the puck, but it does go in down low to the red line, and Cogswell tried to slow it down. Instead, it's picked up, and Holzer will start the breakout. Sand gives away for Lunsky, and he comes in off sides. And we'll have a face-off just outside the Husky zone in front of the penalty box. Well, in terms of goals scored in the first period, Andover has outscored their opponent 42 to 16 in that first period. But uh, meanwhile, the skippers come in at 130 to 14 in terms of outscoring their opponents. But both teams, the second period is really the tipping point. We'll talk about that. Face-off win for the Huskies. They quickly get into the Minnetonka zone, but turn it over. Law right at the center line. will send it in deep. Nelson will play it in behind his goal. And there's Hupka with it. Now gives off near side. Pass ahead for Luke Gary. He'll gain the zone into the Andover zone. Shot. And that one goes up into the netting over the glass behind Bo Altman. And we'll have a face-off inside the Andover zone. I mentioned that second period and Mark Manny last night at the press conference said, yeah, our second period, we just kind of get it moving. And they do. They've outscored their opponents in that second period, 65 to 21. Meanwhile, Minnetonka has outscored their opponents in the second period, 52 to 7. You and I got to see the section final, Joe. We talked about oh. uh, during that game, that was the, the big period for the Huskies as well. Huskies win the faceoff. Thorson has it on the stick. He's pressured, but he's able to get it out of the zone. And now he picks up the loose puck again and gets into the skipper zone. Gives off. Stringfellow shoots from down low. And Nelson comes outside the blue paint to make the save. And the skippers are coming the other way. Wide. Barrows goes into the right circle. His shot is deflected by Caden Casey, who is marking him pretty well. Burroughs hustles to come after the puck. Instead, it's going to be picked up by Gavin Geary. He gets checked off the puck by... Stringfellow, and Pardo has it now in his own end. Outlet pass for Stringfellow, and now connects ahead with Caden Casey. Casey puts it through the legs of Hupka, but he gets ridden outside the play. Moore will pick up the loose puck at center ice. Good back check there by Brooks Cogswell. He pokes it away, and Babineau now with some time and space on the near side. We'll dump it in. And Bendall will chase. Nelson plays it off the backboards. Doesn't get much on it. And Babineau has an angle on it. Babineau gives for Dahl. Dahl kicks it ahead and runs into a check. He and Babineau can't come away with the puck. It's the skippers that do. It's Lunsky. Lunsky gains center ice and sends it in deep. Back and forth we go. Huskies and skippers. Still looking for that first goal here tonight. 4.51 remaining in the first period. See if the Huskies can put some pressure as Hupka and Stout are still on the bench. And they've got some secondary and third line defensemen out there right now for the Skippers. Claire's on defense for the Skippers. But playing it right now is Ashton Schultz. He's chased by Anthony Pardo behind the net. He puts on the brakes to Schultz. Goes back behind Altman, and again, a little back and forth. Now, right circle shot, one-time opportunity was Claire's coming down from the blue line, and I'm not sure that one ever got to Altman. Back and forth, backhand attempt, centered, it, and stick came out from Bo Altman. He poked that one away, and now we've got a puck that goes up into the crowd. Just a couple rows behind the penalty box and a TV timeout. 
Well, so far, we haven't seen much of the Husky buzz. Again, in that second period, you start to see the teams kind of wear down. But this is the number one ranked team in Class 2A taking on last year's Class 2A state champion. Uh, the two teams haven't met much throughout their uh, career and then throughout the time. I have them meeting up on three times in total. In fact, a 4-1 loss earlier this year is what Andover took to Minnetonka. They were 0-3 against the Skippers. They had a 2-1 loss in 2019-20 and then of course it was Hockey Day Minnesota in 2019 and they took a 5-2 loss up in Bemidji in that game. So Huskies looking to get that first win against the Skippers. It was cold that day. I was at that game. That was. It was. That uh, was like 25 below. I thought wind chill. Yeah, when we, I remember when we got to that rink, Joe. It was a. Uh, we, it was right there by the bank. You saw the, uh, and it said minus 19, and the wind chill was even worse. It was. Uh, it was a very, very cold day, but a good experience for the Huskies. I know they enjoyed it and getting up there. You know, getting to be part of the Hockey Day in Minnesota festivities. It was. A, it was a really good experience. It really kind of vaulted the uh, the Andover program too into. Uh, you know, a statewide prominence. Yep, and that year, that was the first year they made it to the state tournament, 2019 and 2020. Uh, and you're right, that did. That really kind of elevated uh, the awareness of uh, the level of hockey that the, the Huskies can play. So they're getting ready to come out of this timeout, but we still have plenty of time in this first four, 13 remaining in the first. And the Huskies haven't been able to get much going in terms of that uh, that buzz, that Husky buzz as they tend to cycle and put some pressure on. More of the pressure has come from Minnetonka. They've outshot and over seven to three here in this first period. And the, the bulk of the shots for Minnetonka, they're coming from the perimeter. They're, they're long shots. They're shots that uh, Bo Altman is able to see with, uh, you know, with not much traffic in front. On the flip side, Andover, they're not being able to get to those shots because they're Minnetonka's packing it in. They're they're getting into their own zone and they're getting three, four bodies in front of Nelson in his own end. Absolutely. Face off inside the Huskies end. Face off win goes to Gavin Geary, and it does get tipped out. Stout can't hold the zone. Stout and Hupka back out there together again for the skippers on the blue line. Comes around the point. There's Hupko waiting for it. He'll work towards the middle. Instead, he goes back towards the boards on the half wall where Tristan May Robinson is trying to put the, the hurt on Hagen Burroughs. He does create the turnover, and the Huskies will dump it in. That's Cooper Conway getting control and sending it into the near side corner. Thorson goes for the body instead of the puck. A little back and forth action with Stout and Burroughs, and the puck does come out of the zone, but Pardo's there to play it. He gains center ice and sends that one in on Nelson, gloves it, and plays it down for Stout. Hupka plays it here near side, and the puck comes off the boards from Moore, and will be played ahead and out of the zone, and Stringfellow will get it to it in his own end, being pressured by Gavin Geary. Puck comes free, Javon, Javon Moore tries to pass it off to Burroughs, and Probably had a shot to uh, take a shot himself with an open net. Instead, that uh, extra pass allowed Huskies defense to get in the way and never to let the second shot get in on net. Pardo did a good job of deflecting that uh, shot. Puck at neutral ice. Fed off. Sand, Jack Sand gets it poked away by Anthony Pardo. We've talked a lot with Coach Manny about his ability and his... His long reach. Long reach, his improved play over the course of the season. It all starts with the confidence of uh, him having a good stick. Dahl breaks up a play, a zone entry from Minnetonka, and it gets sent right back into the Minnetonka zone. D to D. Have, playing the puck here is Danny Clares. His pass too far ahead and rolls in on Altman, and he'll glove that one and get a quick whistle. I'd mentioned earlier, an 18-game win streak here for the Skippers. They have two losses this season. One to come the way of Chan Hassan, a 4-1 to one loss. That was back on December 10th. And then, of course, a loss to Wyzetta, 3-1 to one loss. That was way back on January 7th. Otherwise, W's the rest of the way. This will be Dahl and Sheets in the face-off circle for Andover Minnetonka. Dahl wins it. May takes it, plays it off the glass, and it's held in. Right there by Ashton Schultz. Schultz still working on it, and he finally gives up. Shot taken from below the red line. Misses everything, goes into the near side boards, near side corner, playing it now. Is Sheets for the skippers. Schultz and Dahl in a battle. It goes into the far side corner, and Cogswell will come away with it. 
Sends it out, picking a that pass off. With Sheets, and now Dahl has it. And he'll dump it in. Huskies will get a change. Babineau the only one to stay out and chase. Dahl was pretty gassed near the end of his shift. In fact, Dahl scored the lone goal the last time these two teams met. Sheets, long outlet pass. He gets it to Moore. Moore puts it on net, and Altman sees it and takes that one away. Collapses down, gets a whistle. And Javon Moore looking for that 11th goal on the season. Able to, or was Bo Altman able to make the save? Well, and last night, not only did he make the saves, he minimized those rebounds. Like on that shot, you're looking for a rebound coming on that far side of the wing. Not happening against Altman. Face-off win for Caden Casey. He plays it in behind his own net. Now he's got it on his stick, and he gains, gets out of his zone. Works to open space, and as he's trying to dump that one, it gets deflected off of a Minnetonka skater and then goes all the way up and above the glass behind Kaiser Nelson. We got another whistle, and we'll have a face-off now inside the Minnetonka zone. 125 remaining here in the first, still no score. And we're moving left to right on this audio-only presentation. And over in their black sweaters, outlined in Vegas gold, white numerals. Minnetonka gets the face-off win. Played up ahead. Moore can't control the outlet pass, and it gets sent right back in by Caden Casey. Stout now takes the pass, tries it again, goes to Moore. Moore works towards center, and trying to pinch up was Pardo. Opportunity, big save there, and a goal. It is Hagen Burrows. Got the rebound from below the red line and had enough time to stick out, put his stick out and tap it in behind Bo Altman. That opportunity came. Just in between, the, just in front of the Huskies bench on the pass that came out from their own end for Minnetonka. And uh, unfortunately, it was Pardo who tried to get that puck and deflected when he didn't. It left a three on one opportunity. And they dropped past the first, first shot was taken to save, but then using that reach and getting it. On the backhand was Hagen Burles, who picks up his 23rd goal of the season. He was able to reach that puck, commandeer, put it on the backhand, and tuck it in a wide open net behind Altman as Altman made that initial save. But uh, that uh, risk coming up just beyond the blue line for the Huskies by not getting that to put the Huskies back a three on one deficit. And Minnetonka scores the first one. 24th goal of the year for Hagen Burroughs. He'll get assists from Gavin Geary and Javon Moore. Burroughs was the one that brought it in. Here's another opportunity as the skipper is right back inside the Husky zone. Stout steps into the left circle, takes a shot, goes through off of a bunch of players, now comes all the way across. Nobody else getting the stick on it until it hit the boards. May putting the pressure on Schultz. Still working on him. Now the puck comes free. Cogswell has it and gets it out of the zone, but Minnetonka right there ready to take it away, and they do, and this time it's Sam Sheets putting it right back inside the Husky zone. Law wraps it around the boards, comes out past Stout. It'll come in. Icing waved off. We're under 20 seconds to play here in the first period. Long outlet pass, and that goes by everybody, and that'll be an icing with 10 seconds on the dot remaining here in the period. Well, Andover, a quick had to get a quick face-off win. Really just need to put some pressure and get some good quality shots on goal. It's been downhill facing Altman here for the most part in the first period. But uh, I'd love to see the Huskies put some pressure on Nelson, the goalie for Minnetonka. Face-off win goes to the skippers, quickly wrapped around the boards. And out of the zone, here's Gary with it. He goes wide on the right side, trying to get around Stringfellow. And that's going to do it here for the period. Huskies will go into the locker room, down a goal, and look to regroup and have a big second period as they continue their defense of the 2022 state title and looking for the back-to-back. -back. Hey, and I see them kind of getting into that groove, getting that first period under their belt. Such an explosive team. The second period, I think, is going to be a hit-the-switch period for Andover. After one, it's 1-0 in favor of the Skippers. Minnetonka, the one seed. Gets a late goal with, at the 15.57 mark, just 103 remaining. That goal will come from Hagen Burroughs, assisted by Gavin Geary and Javon Moore. Shots are 10-3 after one period. We'll be back with second period action here in just a, just a short while. Stick with us here on QCTV Sports 
I'm Pete Anderson, Joe Rulin, and we'll be back. Stay hockey. Welcome to our winter edition of At The Half, the show where we take a closer look at some of our area high school sports. I'm your host, Chuck Stenz. Andover boys and girls hockey look to capitalize on their outstanding dual state championships last year in order to continue their success into this season. Let's talk with the head coaches from both teams to see what the teams have to bring. I'm Melissa Volk and this is my 10th year at Andover. Uh, our expectations are kind of similar every single year to be getting better, you know, as the season goes and be playing our best hockey come February. You know, we're a year older, you know, last year we were super young with so many freshmen on the team and, and now kids are kind of filling some different roles and, and kind of figuring it out this year. Our captains, um, Ella Berger, Issa Gettle, Maddie Brown, um, that top line of ours, and then also Kaylin Mom back at D, Courtney Segman, our, goal, our goalie, but then a lot of other players that fill some huge roles for us and give us that depth that we need. Yeah, so every game, you know, we kind of get excited for and another opportunity to play with our teammates and whatnot. Uh, but tomorrow we play Minnetonka, so that's a big game. Um, and then uh, we're in the Dinah tournament at, after Christmas. Yeah, uh, we love our youth girls. We're so um, lucky to know all of them on such an individual basis. But, you know, the biggest thing that we preach here is just working hard and having a good attitude. My name is Mark Manny. I'm the head coach of the boys hockey team at Andover High School. Well, last year's team, uh, a lot of our skill up front was underclassmen, and when you have underclassmen leading your team uh, on offense, uh, they don't feel the pressure that seniors feel, so they tend to kind of play loose and, and, uh, and play very well. Seniors sometimes uh, you know, get the feeling it might be their last game if they lose, and, and sometimes that leads to not playing well. So um, we had the perfect combo last year of great senior leaders who were calm under pressure and juniors who played free. Uh, we'll see what we have this year. Uh, our best players are going to be seniors this year and, and sometimes, like I say, that, uh, that's not a great recipe and sometimes it is. Um, so we hope our young guys get better uh, every game and then we get good leadership and uh, I, I think this team will be pretty good by the end of the year. Well, up front, our, our three big guys are, are uh, Gavin Thorson, uh, Caden Casey and uh, Cooper Conway. Um, uh, Kate, uh, Casey and Thorson both had over 70 points last year. Conway was uh, hurt about half the year, so he had uh, a few, his offensive numbers didn't look quite as impressive, but uh, they're gonna be our leaders up front. Uh, throw in uh, uh, senior Mac Yell, uh, and we're looking for big things offensively from him and junior Ben Dahl as well. And after that, uh, we're gonna see who steps forward and kind of takes the mantle and run, runs. Um, on the backside, uh, Tristan May Robinson, uh, senior captain who's uh, been a stalwart for us for two years now and uh, we'll be again for a third and then Landon String fellow, a junior who played a regular shift last year and it's getting better by the day. Um, back in uh, the net, we lost Austin Bronze who was probably the best goalie in Minnesota last year. Um, so we're just looking for who's going to step forward and take that job. We've got four very capable goalies and any of them could be our starter by the end of the year. The Tornadoes have some new dedicated members of their cheerleading squad. Let's check in with them to learn some more. I started coaching this year. I used to coach at a different school for an elementary competitive team, so this is kind of a switch up, but I really like it. My name is Jordan Waldinger, and I've been coaching here for four years. I'm gonna be going on five. I came here to be the assistant coach just right after I graduated high school, so I've been here for, for a bit. Last year was kind of rough for us. We had a lot of drama. 
a lot of issues, but I feel like this year we have the most committed and hardworking team that I I've personally ever seen. have ever seen. Yeah. yeah, we are some, of, this is some of the most hardworking girls I've ever met. They are so committed, they want to win, they want to be here every day, they want to put in the work, and they want to get that bid. I think there's just more, more energy, more, more effort, so I just think uh, this team is just miles different than it was last year. They just, they want to be here. I can tell they want to be here. They want to put in the work. They're putting in work outside of practice. Yeah, the, yeah. Drive, is, the drive is really mm -hmm. good. I enjoy it. We learned from our middle school coaches that were old Anoka cheerleaders that learned different ways and different techniques and stuff. And um, basically, when we got our new coach, Caitlin, she brought in some new um, cheers that she did with her old team. Also cheers that she had learned in high school herself. Yeah. So uh, yeah, cheers end up kind of just being a big collaboration of what ends up working for the team and like what we like the most. Our pyramids that we do in our competitive routine, we have performed them at football games just to kind of practice mm -hmm. it in front of a crowd. Yeah. And we've done it at we've done a couple of routines at Pet Fest. I think um, I think games that we cheer at, I feel that's more that's more performing in competitions that do view as like competing. Like it's more intense. Our first competition of the year usually is regionals and it's always the Saturday before Halloween. Um, and then after that we have competitions usually on Saturdays, every weekend or every other weekend kind of after that. Until like late February when um, nationals is. When I got hired, that was my goal to the AD, was yeah. I would like to take this team to nationals. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a huge goal for coaches as well. Yeah. So. Coaching this team, I, we've gotten you know, two bids at the end and we just haven't gone yet. So I'm, I, I think that's, my, that's always my goal. Nationals. nationals. We want to get to nationals. Yep. The Rebels gymnastics team is committed to setting goals and improving throughout the season. Let's see what the team is up to and how they plan to seek success this winter. We're, we're down a bit, um, but I've always said I want to work with athletes who will work hard. Like, if you love gymnastics and you work hard, that's who I want to work with. And, and we've got a, a core group of uh, great girls. We've got an awesome uh, senior leader in Melina Ong. Um, I don't know anybody that's worked harder, uh, so it's been a pleasure to coach her and she's already been an awesome, invaluable captain and I know that will keep going through the season. We lost about half of our team, I'd say, and then we got a lot of new um, middle schoolers, which is really nice so that we have a really young team right now and I think the season will be really fun. We have our summer practices, and then we also do, like, I tried to do monthly team bondings over the summer before season started. So the technique is the thing that takes a little bit more time and repetitions to um, build, and, well, really all those things, strength, flexibility, but the strength and flexibility are what we really focus on as a, as a coaching staff of those are things we can control. If you're doing your splits daily and really working it, you'll get more flexible. If you're doing shoulder stretches, and we do partner shoulder stretches and a lot of different stretches, you'll, you'll get more shoulder flexibility. Um, so the strength and flexibility we focus on a lot. Uh, we focus a lot on improvement. So it's always a goal of ours with both our varsity and JV to have the team from that first meet to the end meet improve eight to 10 points. Um, and last year, I think we got almost to 12 with the varsity and pretty, I think maybe even 13 with the JV. So um, those continue to be our goals. So this year, we're just focusing on rebuilding those good team habits and that mentality towards improvement. And, you know, we're going to try and beat those teams that are at that same level that we're at and uh, show that we worked to be our best on that day.
That's it for this edition of At The Half. Make sure to keep up to date with all your local sports coverage by liking and subscribing to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Thanks for watching. Jason, let's go see your room. And welcome back inside the XL Energy Center. I'm Pete Anderson alongside Joe Rulin. And Joe, the uh, first period in the books. We're just a couple minutes away from dropping the puck here in the second period. But uh, the first period story of that one is the defensive pressure, the defensive, uh, what do you want to call it? The uh, Just a, a, a packed in a lot of similarities in. to what Lakeville South was doing in the first period uh, last night. Uh, as they tried to prevent anyway a needle stretch passes, but they're packing it back and then making them trying to put it through about two or three layers of defense. And the lone goal coming in, coming on a three on one rush for the skippers, their top line. And we have that replay coming up right here, courtesy of 45 TV. That long pass, it was Moore finding Burrow. Burrow passing it to the near side and the deflection comes in on Burrow's skates and he's able to control and put in with a little tap on the backhand. And the yeah. shot there by Moore, the rebound came right in on the skates of Burrow as, as he was wide and then a little bit below the line. He's able to uh, make a nice little, you know, a, a good skilled play to uh, get the first goal and the only goal here of that first period. Yeah, and not to pick a scab, but that really evolved. That opportunity evolved on kind of a miss attempt to uh, swipe a pass out from a cross ice from one side to the other out of their own end from Minnetonka. And when uh, they missed that defensively, that created the three-on-one opportunity. And they wasted little time uh, making uh, the Huskies pay on just a split second decision so andover gears it up here they're going to need to uh start playing some downhill uh, uh hockey here and, and i think you're going to see probably a little bit more movement and trying to put more pressure uh and sustaining some of that pressure here for the huskies and we are just about ready to drop the puck it's casey against gavin Geary. casey wins the face off and Yet still, Javon Moore is able to get control of that puck and set it inside the Husky zone. Played along the boards and tapped back along. Tristan May will retreat in his own end, wrap around the boards here near side. And the puck comes out to Casey at center ice. He works through traffic and he's bottled up, caught on the backside by Hagen Burrows and creates a turnover. You've Long seen pass that. to Stringfellow, almost gave it up in a... Had an odd man rush, but Thorson will pick it up. Goes through the circle and loses the puck. Never gets a shot off. One interesting stat we had from that first period was shots attempted. 22 shots attempted by Minnetonka, just 10 on goal. Five shots attempted by the Huskies, just three on goal. Yep, and that's what I was going to say. Even when you saw Caden Casey come in that last time, he was uh, like triangulated by defenders as he crossed the blue line and really could do nothing with it. And they're finding a way to kind of isolate their their players uh, and not allow them to, uh, to get any odd man rushes. Conway sends it up ahead for Babineau before he heads off the ice. Babineau can't control the pass. And then behind the play, here's Ryan Holzer. Rolls, Holzer will send the puck up the boards. Good play there by Dahl. Not letting Minnetonka get out of their zone, but still no prolonged possession here for the Huskies inside the skipper zone. Law in a battle there with Luke Gary. Gary holds the puck, gives it up to Sheets. Back and forth, now sent up, and Babino will pick it up along the boards and get it out of the zone. Robbie House will turn around and send it right back in. Altman behind his own goal. Now he's on our right. And Huskies come out of the zone. Long pass across the ice for Cogswell. Cogswell takes a shot from the left circle, and that one is redirected by Nelson in net into the far corner. Skippers come away with it. Robbie House in a little puck battle, and he goes to the ice, takes a stick out of Cogswell's hands, but no call. 
as they got tied up. Outlet pass will be gloved down by Pardo and deflected and coming away with the puck here is Austin Schultz. Schultz circles into the Huskies zone down below the red line. Now he comes away with the puck again, plays it off the boards. Here's Hupka. Hupka with space, sends it towards the net, never got in on Altman, and I think that was blocked by Pardo. And Sands tried to center it on the far side, and that was taken out by a string fellow going to the ice. Gorowski will gain the puck for the Huskies. He shoots, that's blocked away by Nelson. Up the ice into neutral, sent into the Huskies end on the far side. Jack Sand for the skippers, plays it. Drew Law gains control, sends it up the boards, and a one-time opportunity from John Stout Goes into the glove of Bo Altman as he awaited at the top of his blue paint. He did. Good focus. Came out. Had some traffic around him, but he stayed zeroed in to make that save. Glove save and no rebound there. But the Huskies, again, trying to generate something here. And uh, Cogswell had a good burst. And you mentioned it uh, earlier tonight, uh, Pete, that Cogswell, you know, scored the nice goal on, on the shot taken by... That's uh, really well uh, late in that third period and got the tip. But he's been active again here tonight and circling around. And, and you're right now you're just looking for somebody who can create that burst, that separation, uh, and some space in order to get a good scoring opportunity. I think we had some uh, equipment issue there with Kaiser Nelson as we had a stoppage between before the faceoff. And uh, it looks like uh, Kaiser might have gone and grabbed the, the mask off of his, his backup. Conway drops it for Casey in the skipper's end as they won the faceoff and works through. Casey goes through the circle, circles, and then gives to Conway. Conway's pass back to the point, gets picked off, and now it's coming the other way. Third line opportunity for the skippers. Jack Stan staying out against the top line. Hit there, gets Thorson off the puck, and the puck comes back in deep. Playing it behind the net here is a shot taken, and that goes up and out of play. We'll have another face-off inside the Husky zone. Well, a chance here to get the uh, fresh set of skates out there and see what they can do to spark the squad. As uh, Dahl, who scored the lone goal the last time they played Minnetonka, was actually, he got scored the first goal of the game, and the Huskies had a rare loss. In fact, they're 18-3-1 this season when they do score the first goal. Dahl had that goal against Minnetonka earlier this season, second game, but they ended up losing it 4-1. to Puck comes free, out at the point, a shot and a goal. That's Danny Pasqua that got it past Bo Altman, and the Huskies are down 2-0 with 13-11 left in the second period. Well, Huskies have the juice, and they've overcome deficits, but right now they need to start generating some offense and uh, they've been held back in their own end just with the pressure that uh, Minnetonka has been able to pressure with uh, an and overall that was well, a, pretty much here. Good. It was blazer. a tip in front. Yep. That's going to go to Gavin Gary. Pasco will get the assist. We've got Gary with his 19th goal of the season. If that, in fact, stays, and uh, yep, there you can see that tip just enough. Well, just under the crossbar. Nothing Altman could do there. So the Huskies trail here by two off of Gavin Geary's goal. Huskies get the faceoff win, quickly sent in on net. Blockered into the corner. Shot from the point, tipped in front by Babineau, and it goes harmlessly into the far side corner, but he's able to win the race there. Bendall has it on a stick, backhands out to the point. Law pushes over to Tristan May Robinson. Robinson gets another tip in front. This one, another one by Babineau. Instead, and the same result goes into the corner. Huskies first time they've really had any prolonged possession inside the skipper zone here through the first period and change. Coming out of the zone now for the skippers is Claire's. He sends it ahead. And that pass can't be completed. Law drops it for nobody and picking it up is Ashton Schultz. Schultz circles through the Andover zone. Now turns back below the red line. He's pressured by Tristan May Robinson. Kicks it free, does Schultz, and it'll get sent out of the zone. Retreating to get that will be Robbie House. Sends it across for Danny Clares and right back in. Altman pins it up against the boards. Law gets there and his pass around the boards, goes off a Crosby Perry sticking up into the Minnetonka bench. And we'll have a face-off just outside of the zone. Well, you know, Pete, we talked at the pregame and 
even through the first. God, I'd love to be able to see those Huskies get some pressure on the skipper's goalie, Nelson, who did not look very impressive last night. In fact, uh, this does not at all look like the same in the Taka squad who struggled just to get the win in overtime last night against Hill Murray. At one point in that Hill Murray game, he'd seen just six shots and given up two goals on those six shots. Correct. For the Huskies to reach that same feat, they'd need to score on each of their next two shots with just four here on the night. Pass picked off at center ice by Javon Moore. Moore gives off here near side for Burroughs in the right circle. He shoots and that goes high over Altman in the cage. And here come the Huskies the other way. Gavin Thorson trying to go through John Stout. He knocks him off the puck. Puck comes back down low. Still free in front. And it goes into the corner. Good work on the back end by the skippers and the back check. Burroughs coming the other way. He and Murrow trade places. Comes back to Murrow. Moore. And Burroughs tries to center it in front. Pardo right there to take it away. Goes into the corner. Thorson tries to work it off the boards and it has it taken away, but we'll have an offside against the skippers as that one had come out of the zone just for a moment. It is Gary giving credit for the goal, his 19th of the season, and it is Pasquay. Pasquay picks up his eighth assist of the season. Minnetonka now up two to nothing on a TV timeout, 11 minutes, 30 seconds to go. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right when you've called out, hey, the number of shots attempted, you know, by Andover in that first period, and then the number of shots that actually made it to the net, just three. That has to be a season low for the Huskies with just three shots on goal in that first period. And they now shot 12 to 5 early here in the second period. Yeah, it's a, a, a definitely a different uh, dynamic uh, than, than what the Huskies have, have seen really since the Maple Grove game. The, you know, the, the Maple Grove game, it was second to or the, to end the regular season. Uh, you know, Maple Grove, a, a very talented team. The Huskies have played a tough uh, a tough schedule this year. Obviously, they've played Minnetonka. They, uh, they've they played Chanhassen to open the season. They paid, played Benilde a couple of times. Um, but they, they've risen to the top some of those times, but there's sometimes where they laid they laid eggs against those teams. They have, they have, and they just showed that beautiful tip. I mean, nothing that Altman could do. That was a tremendous tip there by Gary as he took it out of midair and redirected it, got the blade of the stick and just put it under the crossbar. And that first meeting uh, against uh, Minnetonka this season, it was uh, Ashton Schultz for the skippers who had a goal and an assist. Meanwhile, Alex Lunsky also two goals in an assist. Liam Hupke had a goal. And then uh, Hagen was limited to just one assist uh, on that 4-3 uh, win. Face-off win goes to Lunsky and the skippers. They quickly enter the zone. Backhands it deep. Does Lunsky. Mays get their, May, Tristan May Robinson gets there first, and they'll break out. Casey picks it up off the boards. Long pass across for Thorson. Thorson backhands it towards Nelson. He directs it into the corner with the stick. And here come the skippers the other way. Three on two, late into the play is Thorson. And shot on net, held on to by Altman. That shot coming off the stick of Alex Lunsky. Well, you know, one and done for Andover under uh, shift and rush back down offensively as Thorson got a backhanded shot and they never got the puck back again. You could see they were trying to hold that zone, but Minnetonka so quick and so efficient on the breakout. Shot taken off the faceoff win for the Skippers. Never gets in on Altman. It was deflected right away. Quickly, Cogswell gives it up for Babineau as he enters the zone and he gets hip checked into the boards right at the half wall. And Minnetonka, just like that, is out of their zone and starting the other way. It's Schultz with the puck. Bouncing puck goes into the corner. Schultz will get there first, and he sends Pardo to the ice. Schultz has it again. Shot from a short angle. Goes all the way into the far side corner, or excuse me, near side corner for us. Cogswell fights at the point to get the puck out of the zone against Ryan Holzer. And picking the puck back up. Sam Sheets. And Pardo right there puts a charge in it with his backhand, and Elevates it into the Huskies bench. We get another whistle with 10.24 remaining here in the second period. The Huskies trail by two and really looking to find their mojo and put some pressure on Kaiser Nelson. They are, and uh, Minnetonka showing some really explosive speed. You, you alluded to, Minnet or to Maple Grove. 
Maple Grove with some great speed gave Andover some trouble this year as well with two losses to them. You know, watching this game, it, it, it does bring me back to a previous game, but it's not the Maple Grove game. It's actually the Rogers game is uh, is the one that this reminds me of. Uh, really strong defense. Uh, Chase Cheslock, obviously a uh, Mr. Hockey candidate, uh, leading the way there for Rogers and, and uh, you know, t picking their spots with their with their elite talent on the uh, on the front end, Sam Ronaldo and a couple of other players that ended up getting the win for the Hus against the Huskies there for the Rogers Royals. Another quick rush up ice, a two-on-one opportunity for the Skippers. Barreling in and unleashing a hard shot there, number 15 for the Skippers, but making a save was Altman as it deflected off of his pad and into the netting. Face-off will come to Altman's right. Altman affectionately referred to. Nice save off the faceoff. Quick shot from the in between the circles right there in the slot. Another shot from the point. That one from Hupka goes wide on the blocker side. Puck comes free. Conway's going to race to it. He's going to get there first. He's got Hupka in his way. Puts it on his backhand. He'll cycle that zone if he can. He gets brought down. Completely tackled by Hagen Burrows. Arm wrapped all the way around his body. That's a, that's a great play if you're on the football field, but not on the... Uh, on the sheet of ice. Yeah, that was surprised there wasn't a call there. They should have had one. That's an easy one, fellas. You guys missed it. But here we go on the other end. It's the Skippers. Hagen Burrows losing the puck. And we do have a penalty, and this is going to come against the Huskies. And it's going to be holding against the Huskies. And it looks like it's Gavin Thorson going to the box. Well, you hate to see that. So we please. see the replay here in, in the XL Energy Center of Hupka just bear hugging Cooper Conway with that puck. Both arms completely around him. Yep. And then, and then on the other end, we're just I'm just trying to see if they have a <laughs> there's another tackle. That one brought down Landon Stringfellow, but uh, we don't have any replay of the uh, penalty to Gavin Thorson. Nine and change to go, second period. This is a big time penalty kill need here for Andover. Skippers will set it up. They go right to the shot off the point. One that timer. Was Luke Gary, well, one timer in the slot, right in between the circles. And missed just by inches. Left circle shot. That one is turned away by Altman. Cup, big rebound comes all the way out to the point. Now it's picked up by Cogswell. Cogswell has an angle and he gets taken down and still nothing. That one I will say that's probably a good no call. But after the, the other two, maybe not. Here comes the skippers the other way. Ashton Schultz gains the zone here for Minnetonka. Shot goes wide into the corner. Casey will pick it up and he'll send it towards Dahl, it's picked off and right back into the Husky zone. Sheets into the circles, now sends it wide, all the way across and it's picked up there by Stout. Stout on the half wall and he'll trade places there with Schultz. Back and forth, Stout, now he's in his normal spot on the left point. Hupka right at the top. Near side, back and forth, more shot, excuse me, that was Stout that shot he missed on the wide side. Gary, Gavin Gary, will give off for Moore. Moore to the top for Hupka. Hupka back to Moore in the left circle. Left thought about shooting. Now goes back down for Gary. Rocks the red line. And that one's turned away by Altman. Moore at the half wall gives for Hupka, who will cycle through for Stout. Stout goes down low. Centering opportunity and one-time opportunity for Moore was missed. Whiffed on completely. Huskies are able to gain control and send it all the way down. Conway. Puts the hit on Hupka, he has to give up the puck. Conway and Casey, the forwards here on this penalty kill as it's almost expired. And Thorson's back on the ice. Gary pressured by Casey, still got it on a stick against the wall and then May picks one out of midair. Can't control it. Ashton Schultz now pressured by Anthony Pardo. Pass picked off by Cooper Conway, gives up for Gavin Thorson out of the box, works it onto the backhand, works to the net. Poke check made by Kaiser Nelson, never got a shot off. Well, you saw that power play, but Huskies back at full strength, but uh, good puck movement by the Skippers as they had three good scoring opportunities. Uh, but uh, some nice days by Altman to keep it at just a 2-0 deficit. Six and a half to play now in the second. 
Tristan May Robinson gives up for Thorson. Thorson works to the middle. He shoots and he goes wide of the net on the blocker side against Nelson. Another opportunity. It gets down low for Tristan May Robinson in the far circle. He turns and fires. It's deflected below the red line. Dull there to get it. Now a centering opportunity. Comes all the way up to the point for Stringfellow. He gets it and goes off of a skate. Turning and firing is Babineau and he gets his shot deflected. Nobody's getting anything in on Kaiser Nelson. Minnetonka doing a really good job of staying in the shooting lanes and not letting anything get on Nelson, who, as we mentioned, looked pretty shaky yesterday against Hill Murray. They have. They've been stacking the, the players just in front of him, and it's tough to get through that wall. But I'd love to see him continue to try to put as many shots out there as they can. Back and forth here at center ice, and then finally the Huskies gain control and send it into the skipper's zone. But... They were on the opposite side of the red line, and we'll get a TV timeout with 5.49 remaining here in the second period. Yep, and uh, but I tell you, they do a tremendous job, Minnetonka, on that power play. They had a couple of tic-tac-toe combinations going, and they had Altman moving from the left side to the right side. Uh, they hit one post on a one-timer in that high slot, but uh, also Altman made a couple of saves. Impressive power play because they came in at 26% and 22 power plays goals on the season. But the Huskies have to kind of think from that mindset piece of, hey, all right, we held them off on this power play now. Let's get after it. And uh, they started to see them pick up the pressure a little bit more after that penalty kill. Of course, Andover, great on that penalty kill. One of the key and instrumental players on that penalty kill is Thorson, who leads the team in shorthanded goals, but he was in the sin bin at the time. So let's see what transpires as uh, <coughs> we're gonna get a look here for the Huskies and those first lines as they come out of this timeout with 5.49 to go. And the Huskies say they have the, the scoring punch. They have the ability to put that puck in the net several times a period, five times as we saw a little over a week ago versus Duluth East. And just right now, they just need to sustain some pressure. At this point, you, you look uh, with with the Andover Huskies, uh, you know, this is their fourth straight year being in the state tournament. This is the second straight year they've gotten out of the quarterfinal round. And, uh, you know, you, you, you put a little bit of trust in the coaching staff of, of Mark Manny, who was uh, in his 14th year. Brett Barta, uh, who's been on the staff for nearly all of that time. He's been on, I believe, for now 10 years. And, uh, and Cal Dukowski, former Husky player, who's uh, now on staff coaching the forwards, coaching the power play. And uh, now, now it kind of becomes a chess move, all right? And Minnetonka, you know, they've, they've played their cards. We see how they're, gonna, how they're going to react. What, uh, what moves does Coach Manny and the, the Huskies coaching staff have to, to counter what Minnetonka is doing to them? Well, back out on the ice here. But again, the first line's out there for both squads. Minnetonka actually taking a, a risk here. They're putting their third line on. Yeah, they are. The, I just saw that. So yeah. it's uh, Jake Sand gonna or Jack Sand gonna take the faceoff against Caden Casey. Faceoff win goes to the Huskies after it bounces around a little bit. Law and May Robinson play catch. A tipped pass by May Robinson comes out. Westman will play it, and we've got Westman playing up with Thorson and Casey. So they're gonna split up Conway a little bit, and maybe play him with Ben Dahl, and. I would guess uh, Luke Babineau. Yep, try to get a little juice going from a couple of different lines. Meanwhile, that checking line really, it seems like that's more of their role tonight for Minnetonka. Long out with pass for Jack Sand. He's able to get in the zone, gets around Drew Law, and he gets taken to the ice. Right before he got a shot on, it was a weak shot, and Altman's able to save it. Thorson coming the other way. He's pressured by Sand and back-checked. Thorson can't control it. Puck comes off of the official. And Westman plays that one. And we're going to go all the way down because the hand was up. And it was an intentional play. So the not a, not a smart move there by Austin Westman. Could have just played defense and held there until Minnetonka played that puck. But playing that one intentionally, it's a, it brings the face off all the way down inside the Husky zone. Just south of five minutes, 4.56 to go here in the second period. Face off win goes for Dahl. And we do have Conway on the ice with this number two line, Babineau, Dahl and Conway. 
splitting up the, the big three line. Stringfellow takes a check as he's trying to get this out of the zone. Now Dahl picks it up and he's able to gain center ice. Four on three with the Huskies. Conway goes to the far side and Babineau step oh. in a nice tip in front. Stringfellow tipped it with the stick between his legs and it just skipped wide. Coming the other way, it's Minnetonka. Shot from the right circle, it's Hagen Burrows. And holding on to that puck is Bo Altman getting a whistle with 4.22 remaining I here love in the how, second period. I love how uh, offensive-minded Stringfellow has become the last you know, last couple of games. And this time, he that, takes the puck down a little farther, a little farther, moved it in, created an odd man rush, and caught that tip in the blue. That, that actually didn't, uh, didn't skip wide. It, it was a save by Kaiser Nelson. It did catch the leg pads as it was headed towards the five hole. Face off win for the Huskies and Caden Casey. It gets wrapped around. Austin Westman will play it off the far side right, uh, right boards. Stopped it right at center ice and sent back in by the skippers inside the Husky zone. Played into the far corner, waiting for it. There is Schultz and Westman will take it up. Looking and sends it in the zone. Near side, Thorson trying to win the race there against Holzer, Casey comes away with the puck. He circles, shoots, and it goes off of a skate. Stringfellow there to keep it momentarily, but Schultz picks off that dump, and it goes into the Husky zone. Tristan May Robinson there to retreat and get there in time, prevent anything further. Luke Geary, wide, trying to get around Tristan May Robinson. He can't. Westman picks up the puck and sends it into neutral ice. Tried to take it up ice, but... Uh Caught that one. Oh, my goodness. Kick save there by Altman. Sheets had gotten in and tried to go far side on the blocker. And Bo Altman making a good save. Get him some confidence. That can help the Huskies generate some, some of their buzz, some of their juice here as we get into the final three minutes of the second period. The Huskies trail by two, needing to get one before they go into the locker room to really build some momentum and take it back into the onto the ice for the third period. Loose puck comes free. Gavin Thorson able to tip it out of the zone, and it's Jack Sand able to get there. Huskies on the power play. And we've got a power play coming, and it's Gavin Thorson again drawing the penalty. He was trying to get around the skipper player. He kind of lunged for him, pulled him down, and Krebash will Kreb get that. Krebsbach. Yep, Krebsbach will get it. And the uh, Huskies get their second chance here on the power play. Huskies, as mentioned, been heated up. Now they'll put that first line back out there again on the specialty unit. Face-off win goes to the Huskies, played at the point. Quick shot taken and held on to by Nelson. Just four seconds expired here on the penalty to Krebsbach. Yep, they've got uh, Conway and Casey along with Dahl and Thorson. Right now on the power play in May as well. Huskies 0 for 1 on the power play. One power play early in the first period. 6-10 mark. It was Hupka that took a roughing penalty against Thorson. This time a face-off win goes to the skippers. And good work there on the wall. It's Gavin Geary taking the puck away from the Huskies and able to clear his own zone. Tristan May Robinson will dump it right back in. Far side, Ben Dahl and Gavin Thorson in a race to it. Tristan May Robinson playing down low, sending, trying to get it back around, and this time it's wrapped all the way around the boards and into the Husky zone. And over comes 90, in. Yep, sorry, Pete. <coughs> 90 seconds remaining here in this power play. Casey behind his own net. Now he comes out, works up the middle of the ice, pass, far side, goes to Thorson, shoots, and it goes off of a skate. We, that seems to be a theme here. This thus far this night. Through traffic, good play there by Ashton Schultz. And he's able to get a shot off on Altman who makes the save. We get a whistle. Crowd yeah. doesn't like that uh, he, Schultz got taken to the, the ice pretty hard by Casey and Thor Thorson together. And I can see why, that's a, that's a tackle. Well, considering that uh, we've had a couple of Husky players that were mugged along the board on two-point takedowns and no whistles, I'd say that's uh, an even-up call that uh, they deserve. But uh, Thorson, I thought, was going to have a drop pass on that power play before he took that shot and went right to the skates of the defenders on the deflection. Face-off win for the Huskies and sending, sending it inside the skipper zone is Cogswell. Can't control it. 
deep enough, and it comes right back out as the skippers were able to get a quick touch on it inside their own end. Stringfellow plays it off the boards. Cogswell will backhand it down low. Racing after it is Mack Yell. It comes around the boards on the near side. Pardo tries to pinch. Instead, he gives it up. Here come the skippers. Shot, and that one goes off of the body of Altman and over the net. That shot taken was Javon Moore. Now a long outlet pass goes off the boards for Cogswell, and he runs into a body. We're nearing the one-minute mark here in this second period as the Huskies trail now by two. Babineau tries to play to Pardo. Pardo pressured and gets it ahead for Yell. Yell gains a little bit of space, but Huskies were at the end of their shift and need a change. Comes back in. Skipper's full strength. Pardo behind his own net. Wraps it around. Sends it to nobody. Burrows and Yell in a battle there. Puck comes off the boards. Back and forth. Shot taken on Altman. Another shot taken. Wide open net and Skipper's players collided with each other. Otherwise, oh, we'd be looking at a 3-0 game in favor of the Skippers. Coming the other way, it's Gavin Gary who took that first shot. Now a long outlet pass. Here's Ben Dahl coming in and all alone. Goes to the backhand kick. Save by Kaiser Nelson. Unbelievable. That's a great save by Kaiser as Ben Dahl tried to go to the short side with a last second move. And Kaiser Nelson denies him with 19.3 seconds to go here in the second period. The Huskies are able to break and spring their first breakaway opportunity. And that time it looked like maybe that puck rolled off the backhand part of that stick. As uh, he was looking forehand most of the time, went to that backhand, and I don't think he got what he wanted on it, but nonetheless a save made by Nelson. Dahl is now the extra forward on the Casey Thorson line. May from the point. Backhand, Dahl tried to feed Casey on the back doorstep, couldn't get it, now it's out to the law at the point. He shoots, that goes off of a body. Hard carry him off the backboards, and that's gonna do it here for the second period. Dahl and Hupka get into it right as the buzzer sounds, and it will be a two nothing lead for the skippers coming into the third period. Huskies will have their work cut out for them against this defensive-minded Minnetonka Skippers. Well, I'll tell you that uh, breakaway opportunity for the Huskies really, I think, was a spark. The last 30 seconds, you really saw the Huskies kind of hit that switch and get a chance to see their style of play and uh, really sparked them. Even though they made the save Nelson, I, I think I'm looking forward to this third period because I think Andover is about ready to hit their stride, and uh, we've seen as explosive as they can be. And they started to feel some and get, and get some some uh, avenues for some quality shots and hustle. So uh, looking for the third period, even though Andover down here after two complete. We've started to see some chess moves by the coaching staffs on both sides. And we'll see in the third period if they end up paying off. Right now, it's the Skippers leading the Huskies two to nothing here in the Class 2A State Championship Semifinals. Winner gets Edina tomorrow night. Stick with us on QCTV Sports. We'll be back with third period action in just a few minutes. drives me every day as a dad is him. Every day he's hungry for something. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. It's okay to make mistakes. As long as it's coming from love, then it kind of starts to work itself out.
The Andover Family Fun Fest has drawn thousands of people with a variety of attractions. But do you know when it started? A group of volunteers working together uh, you know, in cooperation with the city to, to put on a, a festival. So when I got here, it was really kind of a, a well-oiled machine moving forward. And uh, as I jumped into a role as administrator, uh, saw my purpose was to Let's find ways to remove obstacles uh, outside, but uh, allow for the volunteer group to continue to put on uh, this festival, which our residents enjoy. Current city administrator, Jim Dickinson, said he joined city staff in 1999, well after it started. So he introduced me to two of those people who were there from the very beginning of Andover Family Fun Fest, back in 1996. Bob DeSteno and his wife Nancy, who is not here, but uh, uh, them and Gary Warble were around at the get-go. Um, and the mayor back in those days was Jack McKelvey, and Jack had wanted to do something. So with that, I think I'll turn it over to the historians here. Well, you were just having a conversation with me, because I don't know anything about it. Right, right. The no, it makes three of us. <laughs> <laughs> we probably forgot more than we know. That's the problem. And we're getting older, you know, we forget stuff. <laughs> Co-chairs of the Andover Family Fun Fest, Bob and Gary remembered plenty. Well, I've been here, and my, my wife and I have been here since the beginning. Uh, I got home from work one night and she said, oh, they, they have a, a request for citizens to help run this festival. <clears throat> so we came to the meeting and <laughs> there were I don't know, maybe maybe six or eight people, uh, a few citizens and the city people. My, my wife was, she's trying to find out as much as she can. So she says, well, when do you want, when are we going to have the festival? We don't know. Uh, where are we going to have it? Uh, we don't know. And that's when we realized this is ground zero for this thing. and. Um, my wife was a nursery school teacher, and so she had all the contacts for children's entertainment, and we hired a bunch of entertainers for the kids, and I think that's where it kind of started with uh, being aimed at the younger kids, and it's, it's been working really well. And some things have stayed the same, like the Andover Fire Department's corn feed. Other things that have been there from the beginning? The baby crawling contest. Of course, the parade. And they even had bingo in this very city hall chamber room. First of all, in the mid to late 90s, Andor was not very big. And the amount of people that we had coming uh, compared to what we have now, <laughs> it, it actually looks pretty sad. Uh, the first fun run was 25 people. And after, let's see, well, it must have been last year that we had 300, 300, 400 runners. So, and we've gone from just uh, timing people manually to chipping them and so it works out a lot better that way. <laughs> so, big changes. And now with a medallion hunt, giant inflatable obstacle courses and slides, fried food, street dances, the 5K fun run, a parade, a classic car show, fireworks and more. It's just grown, and, and I think the reason it's grown so much, the population just grown so much in the city. So, we need more room. <laughs> we need to expand. Bob and Gary say a major part of the celebration is the food vendors. The crew go out and measure where they'll be. And they actually helped set up the electrical system to help that part run smooth. We've done it for so long now that we kind of on autopilot. Right. It's, uh, it's a good thing. So, because yeah. it starts early in the week and it between marking the grounds and marking utilities and it's a lot of things have to come together for it to, to happen. 
but I guess we do it because it's fun. They also wanted to give a big thanks to the Andover City staff who helped them set up and especially the cleanup. It is, and that's what I like about this community. Everybody works together. Great community. So when you go out to this year's Family Fun Fest, make sure you find Bob and Gary to thank them for making this celebration what it is now. Because don't forget, this is a volunteer-ran celebration. Just come join us and see, yeah. the, see the experience. It's, it's the food experience. vendors are... It's, it's a long day and a half festival. It's amazing what we pack into a day and a half. <laughs>
Started out there, it was a Hagen Burroughs getting that uh, rebound and then uh, tapping it in. And then in the second period, it was a shot from point. Danny Pasqua getting it tipped there by Gavin Geary and put the skippers up 2-0. And then late in the third period, it was Ben Dahl coming in all alone, goes to the backhand, and the extension of the right leg by Kaiser Nelson keeps this game scoreless for the Huskies, or at least on the Huskies' tally side. Kaiser Nelson still pitching that shutout, uh, stopping all nine shots he's seen. But I did like the juice. I know it sounds like the eternal optimist, but I did see that jump of that juice in the step of Andover near the end of that second period, and I think that could potentially spark some life. Uh, as I mentioned, the nine shots on goal have got to be a team record for the Huskies being held to just nine shots after on goal after uh, just two complete periods. Let's see how they respond. Adversity is the best path to greatness, Pete. They have it now if they can overcome this two-goal deficit. We saw there in the second period Coach Mark Manny shifting the lines a little bit. We're back to the original top line of Conway Casey and Thorson. Quickly, it's the skippers gaining the end of, in the entry into the other zone. Hagen Burroughs loses the puck into the corner, but now he has it back underneath the goal line. Tristan May's pass is tipped, and Burroughs has it centers in front, and that pass is picked off by Casey. But right there, Javon Moore using that length of his. He's a tall, tall drink of water. And the skippers have maintained possession. Shot from the, between the circles by Burroughs. Didn't get all of it, but it did get in on an Altman. And still Thorson not able to get it out of the zone. Huskies not showing much poise with the puck, just throwing it into empty space and not completing passes. Thorson now has it on his stick. Drop pass for Conway. Conway long pass across, and it was Mark. Casey had a body on it in Hupka while Conway had space. A good defenseman back there, and they watch for that play, and you mentioned that he was marked up as Casey, unable to get to that pass. Back out into neutralize. Skippers were offside, so they'll have to touch up. Now they do, and they dump it in deep. Altman tried to stop that one before it got around. Instead, Crosby Perry waits for it on the far side half wall. Skippers winning battles to the pucks, and even when they don't, they, they get their feet moving and get it going. Dahl enters the zone now, works wide, shoots, turns it, big rebound, and Babin will work to the far wrong post. He worked to the near side post instead of the far side post. It would have been a tap in had he been on the far side post. Well, you also saw Nelson look a little shaky on that shot on, and maybe that brings some doubt into that mindset for Nelson as well. Puck is picked up at neutral ice. This is Jack Sand, and he'll dump it in as it wraps around the boards. Played into the far side corner, and there's three players aside. Rocco Gorowski for the Huskies, still working on it. Tristan May Robinson is the one that comes away with it, and he gets brought down, and the Huskies are able to break out. Brooks Cogswell has it on his stick, and he tried to send it across as he was getting taken down, and the Huskies will regroup. Rocco Gorowski plays it off the boards ahead, and it's outside of the reach of Mac Yell, and it'll go for an icing as it goes just on the near side of the post next to Kaiser Nelson. The face-off, as you mentioned, comes all the way back next to Altman in the end over into the ice. And again, the Skippers come in with that 18-game winning streak, a record of 27-2. And two. And, uh, and over. Looking for that first goal. I have a hunch they break that goose egg. There's many, many more to come. Stout goes across on the, off the face-off win. Now puck comes through the middle. And Casey had his pass get picked off from behind the net. Now Thorson has it. He'll circle through towards the middle, gets center ice, now gives it off for Casey on the near side, gains the zone, and tries to flip it through to Thorson. It was behind him. Puck comes in to neutralize. May chips at it. Now it comes back. Hupka will go D to D for Stout in his own end. Long cross-ice pass. Finds Burroughs. And this time Tristan May Robinson is able to get that puck off of his stick and start it the other way. Thorson. Works through traffic, and he gets a big hit from Hagen Burroughs, and he's on the ice. He's in pain. And we get a whistle, and that is not what the Huskies are looking for with Gavin Thorson. Slow to get up, and he will get up under his own power and head to the bench. And We'll get a stoppage here, and... 
Yep, just inside the blue line. Had him lined up as he was trying to extend possession and maybe create an opportunity, but when they connected, lined him up there, maybe just knocked the wind out of him a bit as they're ready to drop the puck. Dahl wins the faceoff, coming back to get it is Anthony Pardo. Pardo plays it off the boards and into the Minnetonka zone. Robbie House plays it. Babineau pressures him. Dahl in there with as well. Now it goes into the corner, and Danny Clares will try and play that around, and out of the zone he does. Stringfellow for the Huskies plays it, but plays it right onto the stick of Clares. Clares quickly enters the zone, goes down to the red line. He gets Stringfellow to lose his edge. He goes down onto the ice. Now it plays back to the point for House, and Yell able to take away a pass, but not out of the zone. Pardo has it on the stick. He's pressured by Sheets. Plays it off the boards to nobody, and Sheets picks it up. Sheets goes around to the far side boards, now to the point. House has it with space. He shoots, and it gets tipped just wide of Altman and goes into the corner. That one came through. Pardo tried to play it, and his stick was lifted as it was getting in on him. And now it comes forward. It's going to go all the way down for icing against the Huskies. And the Huskies got caught in that buzz from uh, the skippers again. They had a couple of good looks. Kept possession of the puck, kept cycling and circling and putting the pressure on the four checks. And uh, the Huskies content with just putting the backhand down the ice for the whistle. So Huskies have got to start stepping into some of those passes and disrupting play to create some odd man rushes. Faceoff win went to the skippers and Gavin Gary, but uh, his as he tried to pull it back to his defenseman, he pulled it right between both of them. But quickly, it's Javon Moore working in, getting past Tristan May Robinson. Good play by Tristan May Robinson. He plays the body, and now it's back on Moore's stick, who will wrap it around here. Stout one times it off the boards. Altman goes up high to make that save with the glove right at his eyeballs. That shot taken from Hupka on the far side, and Altman makes that save as well, and the Huskies just can't win a battle on a loose puck. Puck comes free, Cooper Conway has it, he gets through one, now gives off, looking, looking, gives backside, shot to goal, Gavin Thorson! Huskies trail by one, 12-11, left to go in the third period. They had a beautiful burst move that time, and it was Cooper Conway taking possession of that puck, and a beautiful drop pass, and then finding Thorson on the backside, and Getting up off the ice was Thorson after receiving a hard check just moments ago. And he cashes in this, this dime, this beautiful distribution of an apple for the Huskies. And that's Caden Kaysen, who else, with that beautiful apple. And it is Thorson who buries it back of the net. And the Huskies have life, and they have cut this deficit in half with 12-11 to go here in the third. The goal goes to Gavin Thoris, and the assists are going to go to Caden Casey and Cooper Conway. Top line getting all three points on that one, and that is a huge momentum boost here for the Huskies. Gavin Thoris in his 39th on the season. Caden Casey is 58th assist on the season, and for Conway, it's his 39th assist on the season. Puck inside the zone. Oh, Ben Dahl almost had a shot as he could have gloved that one. Instead, it's coming the other way. Shot, Krebsbach takes it. It got through on Altman. He made the save. Drew Law on the far side boards in a battle with Jack Sand comes through and Ben Dahl able to get it off a Krebs box stick. Now a shot taken and big rebound. Picking it up is Austin Westman. Austin will just chip it in, sends it right in on net by Kaiser Nelson. And he got in on the rebound, trying to take that one away from Ryan Holzer and it went up and over the cage. And Long now outlet pass for the skippers, that'll go for an icing. And you can feel it. The Huskies, when they get that momentum, suddenly the other team, their opponents panic. You hear and you can feel the buzz from up here. Ironic enough, Minnetonka right there just did what the Huskies had been doing most of the game. They got possession of the puck and iced it. Now the faceoff comes all the way back into Minnetonka, end of the ice. And you can kind of feel that ice starting to tilt, Pete. It's starting to tilt towards the Minnetonka goal. Even on that uh, nice play by Weston here at the end, he came in and took a couple extra strides, played the aggressor, deflected, challenged the defender trying to come out. And you can uh, 
You can see it on the ice. There's life in those legs out there for Andover right now. And it's worth pointing out, you know, uh, we, we've seen a lot more ice time tonight with Austin Westman than, we, than we've really seen all season. And, and the reason for that is K.J. Sauer not in the lineup. He's uh, He was injured early in the game yesterday uh, against Lakeville South. Uh, had to leave the ice. Kind of a scary moment there. He took a big hit and was uh, motionless on the ice for a couple moments. But uh, he is on the bench in street clothes wearing the... Uh, wearing the helmet, he's uh, alongside uh, Coach Cal Dukowski on the bench. And uh, glad to see KJ is okay and moving around and, and feeling okay, just not in uh, hockey shape right now. Well, Minnetonka probably needed that timeout more than anyone right now. It's, they could kind of feel that push coming. You could, that rush up ice by Andover in that last goal really illustrated the explosiveness of that line. And uh, it was good to see uh, at time uh, Cooper be able to kind of be more poised with that puck. I know last night in the press conference, Coach Mark Manny says, hey, well, he's a weapon, and we like him to have that puck, but not that long. And sometimes you like to have Casey with that decision. And that time Conway so made the nice dime. Off the time. TV timeout, both teams get to put their top line out there. It's Casey versus Gary. Casey wins the faceoff for the Huskies. Thorson has it. He shoots through traffic. It gets open over the glove and into the far corner. Conway has it in the corner. He works off of a body, and then it's – that is Burroughs that got a piece of it and sent it into his own bench. We'll have another faceoff inside the Minnetonka zone. See one of the uh – Players there for Minnetonka, and Gary kind of flopped down, trying to maybe draw that penalty on Conway. Not to be had. Casey against Gavin Geary in the faceoff circle again. This time, Gavin Geary wins it. Quickly wrapped around the boards, and it's Javon Moore starting the breakout. He does. He gives it to Gavin Geary, now near side for Burroughs. Burroughs shoots from the point. It goes wide, misses everything, comes all the way out to Hupka, who keeps it in the zone. Huskies still in that little trail mode. They're not uh, ex anticipating those puck movements. As well as we've seen in the past. Casey comes away with the puck, works through the middle, looks and goes off the boards ahead. He finds Thorson. Thorson in the right circle, goes to the back end. He shoots it, kind of goes sh short side. And finally, it's Nelson throwing the glove on top of the puck behind the goal line against the leather on that uh, backside of the cage and drawing the whistle. What a gorgeous stretch pass off the board. I mean, he threw and passed Thorson open right to the stick and i mean that's what caden casey does he's consistent calm out there sees it and but that was an outstanding pass almost allowed thorson to go in and tie this up face off win goes to doll he gets gets it over to babino and babino draws the trip huskies are going on the power play here 10 27 remaining in this third period huskies get the opportunity here and they had a great opportunity on their second power play to convert and they had a couple of others, but now it's a chance on this tripping penalty by Minnetonka for the Huskies to tie this up. This is their third power play of the game. It's a trip to Danny Clares. And so the Dahl will go on face-off duty. He loses the face-off. It comes out to the point. Tristan May Robinson can't get there. It comes all the way down. And Casey will race to it behind his own net. Works through the middle. He's got Schultz waiting for him and Sheets. Still through the middle. He's got it. Gives off of the far side. Tristan May Robinson shoots it. Isn't glove clean. And now the puck comes out into the corner near side. Husky's still battling. Held in at the point. Conway there. Dahl drops it back. And there's Schultz with it. He'll flip it up high in the air. And awaiting it at neutral ice is Caden Casey. Pressured but gives off. And... Conway gave up on that puck. Luckily, Thorson was uh, right there to, to scoop it up. Thorson tries to go through traffic, goes through, tries to go through four bodies, and it has oh, to take him down, and now he's going to go into the... He just threw a stick right at the goalie on a trip attempt, and uh, Thorson's going to get the gate. He was spinning after he tried to split the defense and then continued his way and then took a swat right at the skates that time. Uh, that one you kind of wish you had back. 
And uh, the Huskies still had a buck 11 left on the power play, but the rest of that will now evaporate into a four on four for the next a minute and 11. That's a tough penalty. Thorson gets his second penalty here of the evening. And as you said, Joe, it'll be four on four here for the next 50 seconds or so. And then an abbreviated penalty, the first, or excuse me, the second of the night for the skippers. Hupka goes near side. This is Stout back up top for Hupka. Four on four. He's pressured by Dahl. Now Conway is going to chase Stout. Back and forth. Two big blue liners for the skippers. Have been really key to their success here tonight. Now <laughs> Hupka just sends it in off the boards deep. And puck comes free in front. Gary's still working on it. Altman gets it on top, and Gary takes a check late. I believe that was Conway coming in to protect his goaltender as Altman was on top, and Gary was still chipping. Yeah, Pardo came in also to kind of get some separation and say enough, enough digging at it, and uh, set it up there. Boy, good save again. Altman keeping the Huskies in this game. 2-1 the score. Caden Casey going to take the face off. He wins it in his own end. And playing it here on the near side as Drew Law plays it up ahead, and it's quickly tipped right back. Law picks up the loose puck and will move it ahead. Shoots it into the far side corner. Cosby Perry there awaiting it. Now it's behind the skipper's net. Perry still on that forecheck, working hard. And finally, the skippers do get out of their own end. Schultz has it on his stick. He works to the near side circle. Works back to the middle. He shoots, and Altman's there to make the save. He's a brick wall, this whole section play. Altman in the right spot, squared up. Great technique once again, and no rebound after a shot came at him in such a short distance, but with some velo on it. And that's what we need to see from the Huskies. Strike that velo and get some activity going. Gavin Geary against Dahl. Dahl wins the face off to Pardo. And the skipper's penalty is over, so the Huskies are now on the PK. Dumped in deep. Nelson will slow it down behind his own net. Stout has it. Long outlet pass, far side. He finds Luke Geary. Now to Stout here at the near side point. Right up top, Hupka back to Stout. Works into the circle, he shoots. Goes off the glove and into the far side corner where Gavin Geary has it. Now back to Hupka. Moore on the circle, down low for Geary. Back to Moore. He shoots, and that goes off the blocker of Altman into the boards on the near side. Stout awaits it and sends it down low for Burroughs. At top, Hupka shoots. That's blockered away. Good job by Altman, seeing that one all the way through. Working towards the, the goal. Here is Stout, now way down low. Wraps it around for Moore. Moore goes to Hupka. Back at even it. strength for uh, Huskies. Huskies. Do kill that power play. Backside shot and a goal. Tic-tac-toe. Javon Good puck Moore movement. with a great pass. And Gavin Geary has his second goal of the game, and it's a two-goal lead once again for the Skippers. Ironic just as Thorson was coming back off the bench, onto the ice and trying to get back into the play. Their passing is tape to tape, Pete. It's, it's impressive. And how accurate, great hands. And they're moving that puck, constantly moving that puck. Tic-tac-toe, there it goes. Goal there by Gary, number 15. And the assist will also be set up there for number 19. He'll get the initial assist, probably Burles. And on that far face-off circle, I I'm trying to see who that was. It was a, that was Moore, Javon Moore and Burles. Or we'll get the, the points on that one. It was not a power play goal. It was uh, even strength. But uh, this is going to come down. Altman plays it with the stick and gives off for Drew Law. Drew Law tried to get it ahead for Thorson who lost his stick. Now Gorowski will play it back behind his own net. Long out with pass off the boards, far side. And saucer pass doesn't get all the way to Thorson. Instead, it's picked off the other way for the skippers. Back out to neutral ice. Winding and firing, and Gorowski has to sit on it and wait because Thorson's inside the zone. That'll allow Schultz to pick it up. And work through neutral ice. He picks up some speed, plays it off the boards in deep. And Karam's all the way into the far side corner around the wall. Gorowski's pass is tipped, and Thorson picks it up. Thorson goes wide. He'll work the boards, works it onto his backhand, sends it down to Nelson. Still bobbling, but he's able to gather and hold on, gets a whistle. 
while Conway was working to the front of the net. Mentioned some good players. A look again, just moving that puck around and just finding that short side as uh, Altman had to move from the left side to the right side. 6.34 to play here in the third and over. Down by two. Had some mojo going, had some smoke going, and had the power play until the penalty whistled on Thorson. But uh, it wasn't a power play goal by Minnetonka, but a goal shortly thereafter. It was even strength. Face-off win came uh, into the Andover zone by Minnetonka, or dumped it all the way down. Now they finally are looking like they're going to get it out. They do. Babno picks up the pucks, able to get his skate underneath him, and pushes it into the Minnetonka zone before he loses it. Free puck right at the Huskies' blue line. Tristan May Robinson sees some space, gives it up to Dahl along the bench, who was anticipating May jumping into the play, and he was going to stay back. Caught him flat-footed. May now down low, pushes the pull, pulls the puck along the boards, but there's nobody there for the Huskies to get it, and the Minnetonka skippers are going to come in to hide the Huskies' zone. Shot taken, goes wide of the net on the stick side of Altman. Cogswell picks up the puck. Sends it. Pass was attempted to, to find Gorowski. Conway, instead of going to get that puck, waits for it, and instead the pass is picked off. Moore tried to shoot, and he missed everything. Whiffed on it. Conway picks up the puck, circles back, trying to find some space. Nice tip that time by Casey to put it on just outside the blue line and see if the Huskies can sustain some possession and some pressure, unable to do that. Nearing five minutes to go here in this third period. Casey has it in his own end. Looking ahead, looking. Outlet pass for Thorson is picked off. There by Sam Sheets. Played back to John Stout. Stout plays it off the boards ahead for Luke Gary, who does the same off the boards, and Pardo picks up that pass. This is a game Minnetonka's willing to play. They just want to bottle everything up. Keep everything in front of them and play a old school, old school Jacques Lemire uh, neutral zone trap. Yep, I was just going to say that was a Jacques Lemire strategy here, and, and they're content with just stacking it up in that neutral zone and making the Huskies come in with some fabulous passes, which are not likely in this trap. Tip back in by Hupka into the Husky zone. Law plays it up the boards, but not strong enough to get all the way up to Conway, so it's picked up there by Schultz. Now an outlet pass finds Thorson. Thorson, all alone, goes through two bodies, keeps the puck on a stick, and then shoots, and it goes wide on the glove side of Nelson. Out of the zone, Minnetonka comes, pushing up. Here's Lunsky. Lunsky pressured by Drew Law, and he gets off the puck. Pardo picks it up. Pardo ahead, right through the skates of Mac Yell. And no possession here for the Huskies, really, in the last minute and a half. Shot taken on the far side. That's Moore. Quick save made there by Altman. Another shot from the point as Minnetonka is able to hold the zone. Krebsbach in a battle with Anthony Pardo. And it's coming away with the puck here for the Huskies is Ben Dahl. Ben Dahl looking, saucer pass through the middle. Tries to go for Westman. Westman just can't get there in time. Gavin Gary picks the puck back up as we're nearing the 30-minute mark. Three minutes remaining, 3.10 remaining here in this third period. The Huskies trail by two. Pass picked off by Austin Westman. And he's just trying to get it out of the zone at this point. And both Dahl and Conway overskate it. It allows Burroughs to bring it right back in. Chipped back in. Burroughs will be the only Minnetonka skipper to forecheck. Huskies should have a little bit more time and space. Casey has it. He's being chased by Sheets. He loses it, sends it in deep into the skipper zone. Puck free off the boards. Huskies trying to get their cycle set up. Conway has it on his stick. He has it knocked away into the corner. Puck battle, and it's sent back out. Good play there by John Stout. Landon Stringfellow all the way back in his own end. Under two and a half to play. Tipped in off a of Hupka's skate, but Stout's there to pick it up and send it right back down the ice. This should be an icing, and it is against the skippers. Well, see, they're going to pull the goalie here as Altman started to move up before that uh, icing. And uh, uh, think about it, take a timeout, well, a TV timeout anyway, with 2.18 to go, and they need to take a look at uh, applying some more pressure here by pulling 
Let's take a look at the brackets here in the Class 2A tourney. As we mentioned earlier, uh, the, the winner of this game, Minnetonka or Andover, if we get that uh, comeback, uh, will face Edina in the state championship. Andover looking uh, to break up the late conference yeah. battle in the in the championship game. Similar to was Maple Grove and Andover in the Northwest Suburban Conference state championship last year. Back to back years where we would have a uh, two uh, both teams from the same conference, Maple Grove and Andover in that classic from last year and uh, Edina potentially facing Minnetonka here in the lake or in the late conference matchup in the championship if things hold up. Huskies got 218 on the clock to try and get two goals and send this to overtime. Or, you know, if we uh, if we get really greedy, let's just ask for three in the next 218, and uh, let's just go right to the ship. I do. I have a reservation for three. And uh, you can see just how difficult that first the quarterfinal round was for a lot of teams. In fact, the Dynam was up by three goals against Moorhead in the third period. Moorhead came back and put that game into overtime, but Edina picked up the game winner in OT. Same thing happened with Minnetonka last night as they were down by a goal with about, I think it was 39 seconds left when they tied it up and then they got the game winner in overtime. Did the Skippers and uh, the Huskies took care of business with Lakeville South. But uh, tonight, a little different look as uh, the Skippers, I thought, may be a little slow on the get up and go, but boy, they have been flying high and focused. Huskies net is empty. Bendall wins the face off. Back to Casey at the point. Casey works to the center. He shoots, and that one stays low. Still in front of Kaiser Nelson. Puck still free, and now we have a whistle. Our angle right here, we saw that puck sitting on the blue paint. Didn't have his glove on it, but he was laying flat on his back. I don't think he had an idea where that puck was, but the official loses sight. He's going to blow that whistle, protecting both the goaltender and anybody else in, in that net area. Extra, Dahl, yep, extra attacker on set again. Face-off win for Dahl yet again. Shot and it kicked away there by Nelson. Played into the boards, into the corner. Conway fights for it. Dahl still entering in. Now Conway comes away with the puck into the corner. Thorson waits it. Thorson sends it in. Nobody there. Back and forth, that pass off the mark. Thorson and Casey, you don't see that very often. Now Thorson plays it out of the air, still fighting for it. Casey wisely stepped back and awaited it. Now he'll move forward. A minute and 40 to go here in this third period. Huskies with the extra attacker and the goaltender on the bench. This one will sum all the way down. It should be an icing, and it is against the Skippers. 129 remaining. Couple of good opportunities. Not picture perfect saves by Nelson. So it, the Huskies are, have to have a little bit of hope. We just get one in. Got it. And you know, that time Thorson put a shot on near the front of the net. It deflected back. Casey went to chase after it. And he thought maybe Thorson was going to be at the wing. Controlled off the faceoff and sent back length to the ice. Another whistle. No, they no waved it off. They wave it off instead. So Sheets on the power or in the, the four check, really getting something going here, over skating the puck. Now Sheets has it. He sends it in. It's a goal. Empty netter, and Minnetonka now up three goals with a minute ten to go in this third period. Huskies will not be defending their title this year at Class 2A, and it has been the Skippers who first to the puck tonight showed some. Quickness and burst speed, and uh, they, in fact, have picked it up as four to one win tonight against Andover, and Andover will be playing for that third and fourth place game tomorrow. You know, I think that that uh, goal, uh, you know, it, the Huskies had the puck, and it really just bounced off their stick. It's uh, kind of a microcosm of this game in uh, loose pucks, not uh, not moving their feet as well as we've seen them do in the past, uh, and getting to those loose pucks. Face off, we're underway here. Bouncing puck, still working on it. Lunsky able to win the race to that puck. Gets it into the corner. Under a minute to play. Belisle will play it around and sends it up on the far side. Gavin Sullivan chips it towards Nelson, who plays that one out of the air and catches that one. 
Well, it was a 4-1 to one loss for Andover in the second game of the season against Minnetonka. It appears those will be the exact same results here as the Huskies and their hopes for a repeat of the Class 2A state championship. Face-off win goes for Gavin Geary and the Skippers. We're nearing 30 seconds remaining here in this third period. Flipped out into neutralized. Belial will play it off the boards for Cogswell. Now sent back in. Crosby Perry trying to get it ahead for Mac Yell. And it's off the mark. Gavin Geary plays it off the boards and Skippers will get it out of their zone. Near side, here's Javon Moore. And Quinn Knudsen will turn around and send it up for Cogswell. Cogswell can't control that one. He'll now backhand it ahead and Minnetonka is gonna head to the state championship game to take on Edina and the Huskies will move on to go see Creighton Durham Hall in the in battle for third place. A game we'll have here tomorrow on QC TV. We will. We'll be here at uh, 4 o'clock on QC TV to call that game. It'll be available on the audio feed as we've been doing here this, uh, this tournament and as well for the girls tournament to uh, not the uh, not the result that the Huskies wanted here. They wanted to get back to that championship game, defend their turf, defend their title, uh, go for the uh, first back-to-back -back titles we've had in the, la the last 10 years since Edina did it. But alas, it uh, it will not happen. While the Huskies were close to here, making that move on that power play, and unfortunately. A penalty whistled on Andover that uh, nullified still another a minute left in that power play as they were, they had that smoke and the juice going. But uh, once they lost that uh, power play opportunity and Thorson came off the penalty bench, they scored three seconds later on an even strength goal. And that was really the dagger goal. Tip the cap to the uh, Minnetonka Skippers. They've uh, had a, a great run here this year. They've obviously played in uh, a lot of these games where they've just been able to uh, out, outlast their opponents and uh, they will now move on to the state championship game and look to get their second state title, their first coming back in 2018. Good luck to the Skippers tomorrow night, but the Huskies will be back tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m. here at the XL Energy Center and it'll be live audio feed here on QC TV, you'll have myself and Joe back on the call as the Huskies will still work to get another banner in the Andover. And that means High I've School. got to change my outfit as well. I think uh, everyone here in uh, the suite is probably happy that uh, I'll be changing the look tomorrow. So uh, it's, it hadn't been washed as well. So, yes. So, well, fresh day tomorrow. Get a chance to look at the Huskies as they try to close out their season with that win for third place.